Hi, welcome to Carport Woodcraft. This is part two of our epoxy table build and what we're going to be doing today is chopping the oak down to size, squaring it off and we're going to be concentrating on building the mould. The first thing we're going to do is rip the pippy oak down the centre with a track saw, square it off at the miter saw and then we're going to start building the mould around the pippy oak itself. I roughly found the centre of the board and then I ripped it down using the track saw, doing this in two passes to make it a little bit easier on the saw. Now we've got a straight edge off the track so we can simply butt that straight, straight edge up to the mitre saw fence and put a square edge on both sides. We're just going to oversize it by 20mm and then we can square it up again at the very end just to neaten everything up once the epoxy has been poured. Now the pipi oak's cut to size we're going to start making the mould. We've got these old wardrobe panels which we've dismantled from an old wardrobe in our house and we've took all the hardware off them and we've got the biggest panel here and we've placed the two pieces of pipi oak on top of there and now we need to build a frame to go around the edges to secure the epoxy inside. So I'm going to rip these down on the table saw now and then we're going to put pocket holes in these and attach them to that to the correct size that we need. Before we can put these edge pieces on to hold the epoxy inside the mould secure, what we need to do is we just need to mark out on this large piece of laminated material here that we're using as the base, where we want the pipi oak to be situated. And I'm keeping these large weights on here to hold everything down so they don't slide around while I'm measuring. So that's 650 mil and the same there. And then I'm just gonna use a permanent marker. I'm just gonna draw around the corners I'm going to place a pocket hole screw every three to four inches. That way it's going to pull it down nice and tight. We're also going to put a bead of silicone on the joint as well so it seals with inside the joint, uh, similar to how you would normally use wood glue. I'm not sure if we've got enough pocket holes in, Jack. What do you think? Looks good. Well, they're not going to go to waste anyway because when the mould's finished with, we'll take all these out and hopefully we'll be able to reuse the mould. If not, we'll definitely reuse the pocket holes. What we're going to do now is I'm going to put a bead of silicone down here. And this is just your normal bathroom silicone. What this is going to do is going to help to create a seal to stop any epoxy leaking out. Put the black line there to place it onto. The top and bottom piece we'll just take a referential measurement. I'll take this one first, we'll put the slabs back in and then we'll push the other one right up tight against it. It's a nice tight fit. Then I'll put some screws in from the side here and pocket all it in down. out now everything's nice and tight so I'm just going to give it a dust off and then I'm going to put a bead of silicone all the way around the inside and the outside and not miss a single spot that's the mold complete then guys and because I was making it on the fly uh, for a customer and I didn't really go into that much detail I'm just going to recap what we did just in case I missed anything but if there is any questions just pop them in the comments below so the first thing we did is we cut the pipi oak down to size we cut it with a track saw down the middle and then we took it over to the miter saw and squared it off once we had one straight edge that we could work from then what we did is we used some laminated board. Now you can buy this from B&Q or your home centre or whatever, any DIY store really. It, it is quite expensive for it, so it's just chipboard and it has like a, a shiny, non-porous material on top of it. So it's 
it should be ideal for placing the epoxy onto because it's not going to soak into it. And, and then we've built, we've built a border around that platform and we've used lots of pocket holes to keep it nice and tight and secure to the bottom. And then we use silicone in there as a sort of bonding agent and just to fill any tiny gaps. Because it's water resistant, it should be perfect for this. And then what we've done is we've put that same silicone around all the joints on the inside and all the joints on the outside. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna leave that for a couple of days to dry. Everything will be cured, there'll be no leaks anyway. The next video in this series is gonna be us pouring the epoxy and we're gonna do this in a two-stage process. If you're a regular viewer of the channel and you like to support the channel, you can do that through PayPal, Patreon and channel membership. And your name will be in the credits after the video as a massive thank you. See you on the next video, guys. Bye.